Bedford was the beginning of a very interesting sequence of music spaces for schools. The recital space with an informal space, the street, together with further practice and teaching spaces. Well, there weren't any proper spaces to perform other than this small hall, which had been an add-on, and it was unsatisfactory, really, in every way. The look, um, the sound, and there wasn't really, uh, when you walked into it, there wasn't a sense of, you know, uh, wonder. In its essence, architecture is a framework for social situations. And each of those situations can be of an informal or more formal nature. Obviously, a music school is a very particular project. There is a certain informality to practicing and failing by yourself, but you pursue that to the most complex synthesis, which might be a concert, by its definition, highly orchestrated and formal. The architect's intention is to affect the people that come to the space. Essentially what you're trying to do is give somebody an intimate experience, a harmony between the space and the music that's produced within it, to give them the impression when they're sitting in a room that they're close to the performance. We made a really interesting architectural breakthrough with an acoustic parallel in the way that the positive and negative, the very highly reflective glass and the solid elements are juxtaposed between elements which are structural and acoustically separated between the inside and the outside. We, of course, cause problems when we say we want a glass wall, but actually the compensations make it very possible. The unusual thing about Bedford School is there's a lot of glass, timber floor, 50% windows, 50% reflective surfaces, and a reflective ceiling. What you have to do is make a computer model of the space and then listen to the model in different seats and make sure that each seat does what you want it to do. If you have a room which is very reflective, you have diffusion to soften the sound and take out the harshness. There is almost no diffusion in Bedford. The only diffusion is the audience, which is a varied surface. It reflects in a particular way. We said to Eric that we we're going to make it so that it will work for classical ensembles up to 20 or 30 people with a longish reverberation time. And then we would have panels which would be moved manually, which would expose absorptive materials to bring the reverberation down. And then you can set these angles the way you want them. It's effectively just opening doors to reveal acoustic absorption behind. So you have a nice reflective surface when they're closed and an absorbent surface when they're open. We used a particular kind of software which creates the geometry of the room and the finishes of the room inside a computer. Then we use outputs from our modelling to demonstrate the building before it's built to the client. We could say this is what it's going to sound like with all the panels closed and this is what it's going to sound like with all the panels open. This is what it sounds like when you put an audience in it. This is what it sounds like when the audience aren't there. And you listen to a string quartet, you listen to a 30-piece orchestra and a voice. And if they all sound great, you're ready to build it. The hall was finished, the head of music asked me what I thought, and I said, well, there's a piano, could you play us a piece? And t you tell me what you think of it. So he played a piece, and he looked at me and said, sounds good to me. When the boys got in it, they loved it, absolutely loved it. They felt special. The new recital hall brought some professionalism into their thinking. This was a hall where professional musicians could come and play and where they could play and fulfill the same. And I think that was a great advantage. The school invited Peter Maxwell Davis to come to be a participant in a performance of his own work by the boys. There is extra pressure when a composer is there, as well as the client and the architect. There is a moment of butterflies in the stomach, a panic, but it goes away quickly because as you hear the sound rise through the hall, you think, 
Hmm, I quite like that. It was extremely well received. Actually, Max thought it was marvellous. That was the formal initiation of the space, and an amazing moment to have this great figure sitting centre front to listen to his own work, played back through these youngsters. The speech that followed made a powerful case for the importance of music within education, in liberating the creative soul and offering a vital route to self-fulfillment. I think it's very important for children to experience playing an instrument and play together. They become expressive people. They become confident and creative. It's very, very important socially to development of um, society. To stand on your own or with an orchestra or a small group and perform to a thousand people. And it gives you the power to do amazing things. When one has finished building, you hand over the keys and it engages with its use. It's like wishing an adolescent child farewell and hoping that it's going to be able to cope, behave and be well treated. 